This program is brought to you by UCKG. Welcome to the Love Talk Show. Yes, and today we have a very interesting topic to bring to you because we're going to speak about love in the modern and past times and how technology has throughout the years affected relationships, Anna. Uh, we're not against technology, not at all, right? It's a good thing, it's great, the achievement. Help us so much, huh? Nowadays. Yes, in, in all aspects, right? Yes. We don't need to just be limited to relationships in the medical field, uh, in many different areas. But even too much of a good thing can be bad. Yes, we everything with a balance, huh? Everything but with... nowadays, many people, they are in a restaurant and they don't look at each other, they, they don't enjoy the time together, so... Yeah, that, that is one example on how technology affected relationships in a negative way. I believe, yes, that a lot of the affection, a lot of the attention, right, that used to be diverted to the partner is now shared or, or split between the partner and the telephone, the, the media, tablet, the yeah. social media, and this. Once again, we're going to be discussing on, on different aspects of this. And if you have been affected by this, I believe this program will inspire you. Maybe you do feel that your relationship has been affected. You, you see, you know, I'm jealous of the phone of my partner because it's he's on the phone all the time. You know, uh, I'm jealous because, you know, he's always at the computer. He, he's paying more attention to his social media profile than to me. So if you feel affected this way, how can you divert this? How can you get back. This is what we're going to be uh, talking about today. And Anna, there's many things that people consider old school or, or things of the past, but we cannot deny that relationships lasted longer. We had less divorce. And I believe much of it was because the attention that the couple uh, dedicated to one another was, was much more um, I would say focus, right? There was more focus. There was more Contact, time together. Huh? Yeah. Contact. Yeah. People today don't uh, give time to each other, so they are prioritizing other things, and one of them is the social media, the advice that they have, and uh, losing focus what's more important in their lives. So. Yeah, that's it. So we're gonna be talking about this topic today. We're gonna be developing this here. And actually, to discuss all this and much more on today's show, we're going to have a wonderful couple that has been married for more than 30 years. And a group of young people will be with us today, and they are going to be talking about the pros and the cons of love in past and modern times, and I believe you will really enjoy it. And now, to show you a little bit of love from some years ago, we will see this couple, beautiful story. They have been together for more than 30 years. You will be inspired to watch their story. Let's watch it. Our meeting was actually a very peculiar meeting. Um, it was 1988. I was a soldier, then I was shot. Then I have to spend a lot of time in hospital, about six months. Then um, after I was discharged from hospital, I have to be transferred from the military hospital to the resettlement where there's women and children. At the same time, she finished her secondary school abroad. Then she was also transferred to the same resettlement to start teaching the kids as a teacher. And there was my cousin who also was doing the same work as she, she's doing, a teacher. Then one day I was um, visiting my cousin and I saw 
uh, a girl, mm, there was a girl there. She looked nice. But before that, when I was in the war, she has a distance cousin. And that distance cousin has her picture from his sister. Then I saw a picture with a beautiful girl on a school uniform. Then I, I told him, if, uh, who is that? Then for the first time she said, um, she's my sister. Then when um, I look at the picture, then I said, this will be my wife. Many, many years passed. Then when I met her, I couldn't still recognize that it's the same girl. Then we start, um, you know, the, the kind of young uh, people's love. Um, I was a bit military guy, a bit naive, I don't care. But I had a subtle love, writing card. You know, those nice cards. I think some of them, they are from Portugal, Brazil. I used to go to, to, the, um, to the market to buy those specific cards. Then I sent her a card and, and um, one day I decided this is, is this, I, I love this girl. This, I have to be serious about this girl. Then that's when I sent my, my cousin again to go and speak to her and she, oof. what did you say? You actually asked your cousin, yeah. because she was my neighbor, yeah. my friend. Yeah. You asked her, you said, um, they normally come and visit you during the weekend, and you say, next time when you come, bring and her. you bring your neighbor, yeah. then uh, she said, mm, I am not going to talk to her about those kind of speech because she will bite off my head. Then you said, just tell her. Okay, she came and she told me, and when she told me, I told her, I said, what am I going to do there? Then she said, oh no, he's just inviting us, you know, you know, um, drinks, snacks, you know, just to pass time. I said, if he needs to see me, he needed to see me. Actually, the one who is sick is the one who goes to see the doctor. Oh. I have no need to see him, so I'm not going there. The day when you saw me, I was styling your cousin's hair. Yeah. You were invited to a wedding. Yeah. It's your colleague, one of the military guys, getting married. And I was tying her hair, and uh, they were there talking. First, he, uh, he arrived. She was not there. She went to pick up something. And he said, um, tell Miriam, her name is uh, Miriam. He said, tell Miriam that her, his uncle was here. So I think within five to ten minutes, Miriam came. And I said, oh, your uncle was here. He said, oh, he's the one we are going to the wedding with. Uh, you know, because she told me, he said, please be prepared. You're coming to style me. I like the way how you style your hair. I said, okay, fine. So she rushed, went home, she dressed up, and she came, you know, something like a cape covering her dress. Then I started styling her, then he came. It's actually, it's actually funny because she saw me as an old man. Because he was wearing a sort of like kind of, they call it safari suit, you know, a trouser and a jacket looking like the same. And then he, he just looks calm and responsible. Wow. So really, then um, one day he came again. I saw him crossing the main road, approaching our house because we had a, an open place where we all sit, you know, the neighbors. And when he came there, he literally took a chair and turned it around. And he, he sat like the chair, the back of the chair is the middle of his legs. And he hold, you know, his chin Other way around, on the back like you are of the seat. And he, start, he greeted me and started talking to me. Then I was looking at him. I said, you're even sitting in an appropriate way and you're talking to me. Then he said, oh, I'm, I'm your visitor. I said, you're my visitor, yes. Then he starts introducing himself, who he is, his mother, his sisters. And I was like, who asked you? Inside my heart. Because I was just looking at him, who asked you? Then when he mentioned the name Hango, I said, this is trouble. One of, one of them was my uncle, his trouble. One of them was my neighbor, yeah, his trouble. He ever end up in the um, head, head of school detention. office, detention and everything. So I said, there's nothing good out of Hango. So please just pick yourself up and leave. Really, I did not give him audience. He did not give up. 
he came back. The next time when he came, he entered my house. And uh, he said, okay, this is what I have come for. Then he starts, oh, um, he, he actually like me. Then I said, can I do something? All what I am thinking of is me going back to school. I'm not interested in men. So maybe you can find somebody else. That's what he said. He said, all right, I understand what you say. But I'm giving you, he said, two weeks or a month. I'm coming back for my answer. As if I had an answer for him. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, okay, great. The situation was like this. When I met her, I, I decided no matter what, how hard she is, she has to be my wife. I think after four months, he said, look at Polonia. It doesn't matter how many times you say no, I will still keep on coming. And soon I will pitch up my tent in front of, in your, front house. of your house. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. For everybody to see that I'm in business. Oh my God. Then something happened. Uh, they what were given it? a mission uh, to go oh, yeah. to Rwanda. Yeah. I think there was something going on there. You needed to sort out some things there yeah. with the logistics. Um, then um, he disappeared. Then I was like, thank God. He's gone. All right, uh, I think about three months. Then the third month, I start missing him. Yeah. I think that bothering, <laughs> I miss it. <laughs> I miss it, anyhow, I miss it, I don't know how. I start feeling bored. I say, where's he, why is he not coming to bother me? Then on the other side, I say, oh, well, fine, let him just go. Then he turned up after three months. He came and when he came, then that time at least I gave him audience. We spoke, then I say, okay, um, I'm going to say yes, but you stay far away from me. Don't come near me. Uh, then he said, uh, all right, that's fine. Uh, then he, I think after three days, then he said, oh, he wanted us to go out. So then we went out and that's the day. Now, I remember very well, is the 20th of October, 1988. After that, um, as we were in exile, the time came in uh, 1989 um, to go back to Namibia under the supervision of the UN uh, Resolution 435. So it was the best time for us to stay together in Angola because it was only the two of us. When we arrived in Namibia, now the reality have to hit us. She has to go to her family, I have to go to my family. When I left Namibia, I left my mom and dad and all my siblings together. When I arrived, it was a shock to me. We kind of fall from the top down, all of us. Now, that was the time for us to get married because we know um, independence, Namibia, there's a lot. We have to find work, we have to go through a lot of things. And I have to take her actually to my mom's house where she is not going to be there as a wife as such, but she become as one more sister to my young brothers. I have to take them to school. So she have to uh, make her budget very tight so that we can support the young one and we do it also in her house. It was a story that was so sweet but yet when people look at us they always say oh you guys you, you are made for each other. After all that which we have actually shortened um, we went through a lot together. Our love still the same. I still love my girl who used to run away from me. Um, we have four boys and one girl together. Uh, beautiful, intelligent kids. And um, now we are actually 30 years together and we can't have enough of each other.
So one of their stories, very nice. I love it. Yes, and uh, Ignatius, it was not easy for you to win Apollonia's heart, right? But in the end, it was all worth it, all the hard work you had to do. They are example to us. Huh? We can see the love in the way that they look at each other. After the break, you'll see some of their comments about love in the past and modern time. So we'll go for a quick break and come back. We'll be right back. Hello, dear viewer. We are here and we came in the middle of the break to tell you this. The best way for you to learn how to deal with your relationship problems, Anna, is to learn how to deal with... With ourselves. If you don't know how to deal with yourself, you don't know how to deal with others. That's right. That's why we have the Love Therapy. Every Thursday at 8 p.m. in Finsbury Park, 232 Seven Sisters Road, N4, 3NX, and also in some other locations. For more information, visit our website, lovetherapy.co.uk. See you there. See you. Welcome back. And just before the break, you saw the story of Ignatius and Apollonia, who have been together for 30 years. And now we're going to see them answering questions about today's topic, love in the past and in modern times. Let's check it out. When we meet, um, it was the, the love of the 60s. And the love of the 60s, is, is the 70s and 80s is different. Uh, we used to give cut, uh, word of mouth. Today, people give more flowers. They, 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 they give things that are more emotional appealing. For us, it was natural, pure natural. Um, I remember if I, if I have to find a card, I, I, I really, really um, love that, and even the way I give to her, it's like I give my whole life. The way I, I write the card, everything is so natural and it's pure. Today is different because material, money, relationship, uh, status, education, all those people, they compare so they can see. They are in the relationship to receive, not to give. For us, it's a missing puzzle that was missed, and that's what I found. The whole thing about today, um, technology can be a good thing, but it can also be um, a divider. Because even, even today, um, there's always a time that I tell her, Daddy, no, no phone, no laptop, uh, no, no iPad. I took them away. It's only me and you. Because with these things, we can be here talking, uh, mm -hmm, uh, yeah, uh, mm -hmm, but you are not yeah. really communicating. And when tomorrow I ask you what I was saying, you might then say, you might not, I can't remember. Because you were on the phone. So yes, when things start going wrong. Exactly. So technology is good, but I, I prefer the old time. It was great to hear their answers about today's topic, and we have learned many lessons from them. But we cannot forget that we can't let the good actions of the past die, Anna, and avoid the bad actions of today. Yes, and now we'll see some opinions from people on the streets of London about today's topic. Let's watch it. I think in the past, you know, when you have relationship with one another, um, there used to be more physical contacts, more things to do. But um, you go out together, you do a lot more things together. Um, but now I think it's more, you know, more social media. I mean, I mean, you can find in a relationship sometimes, instead of talking to one another, you're sending text messages and sending pictures and so on. Today, I think there's more ways to communicate with your other half. So, for example, social media, um, 
okay, not really social media, but so, like phones, you know, text messaging, emails. There's different ways to like, you know, to communicate, not just writing letters and then waiting for it to arrive there in the person's place. Then they read it, then they write the letter and then they have to send it before you get a response. But today it's much more quicker to communicate. I, I definitely think that beforehand, um, in the past, people did have a, a greater sense of uh, relationships. So they were more romantic, uh, they were a lot more traditional. We all now use mobile phones, we sit in bed at night using mobile phones, we sit at the dinner table using mobile phones, not talking to each other. How do you get that balance right, of still having that relationship over the dinner table and not both sit there answering your emails over the dinner table? I think it's good that you can chat to people whenever, wherever, it's good if Especially if you're in different countries, you can see people on the screen, but um, it's not the same, is it? I genuinely believe there's a lack of respect, a lack of love and lack of morals as well. And that's why my generation finds it hard to love. So Anna, this is really interesting, right? The answers that we got yes. from people. And many of them agree that they would like to have more interaction, right? More of the time really spent thinking about the other. Because today, with technology, things became so easy. Yes. Right? It's the, uh, the good side of it, because you communicate so fast, but you're not so close as you used to be. Yeah, not so spontaneous. Yes. Today, there's a lot of things that are already like templates. You just take that and you send it to the other one. Yes. But we were even talking here whilst watching the, the video about how everything began with us, right? I remember I was, because of work, I was in, in Jamaica whilst you were in Brazil. It was yeah. a long distance relationship for about, what, six, seven six, months? Yes. And I remember that I told you, write me letters, write yes, to me every week, and don't write me just a line, yes. right? It so, was about six pages each letter <laughs> that I did. Yes, and, and how was it, uh, what were you thinking in those moments when you were writing to me and, and how, how was the experience? It was very nice. I, I just want to share about what was going on in my life, to share with you a little bit of me. It was uh, lovely. And, and you know, even though we've been married now, it's 18 years going into 19, but we still have these letters yes, until today. We never got rid yeah. of them. And we mm -hmm. never will. We don't intend to. Yes. Because these were moments. And I write back to her. Not so many letters that I did. To yeah, you. you wrote more to me. <laughs> but I did also write to you. And, and it was something spontaneous. You know, I, it, it really took me time. And that's the thing. You know, technology can make us so busy. Once again, we're not bashing technology here. It's a great thing. But there has to be a balance in a way that you don't let yourself be so consumed, your time especially be so consumed with it, that you don't have time even to write a letter. Maybe people to invest in the relationship. People no? don't write letters anymore, Anna. Yeah, no. But you can uh, write an email, right? Yeah, <laughs> a long text. You can, you know. But I think also it's nice when you... It's something handwritten. Yes. Uh, you know, I would, I would rather try to make a special calligraphy than to choose the kind of font yes. <laughs> that I'm yeah, it's a little bit to use to type in the computer. Because it shows, you know, I, I want to send something personal. A letter is something more personal, yes. right? The, the email is, is more professional. I'm not saying it's wrong. Then again, you know, I do send you emails too and text messages. We do this all the time. We're always, always checking in on one another. I love to do this because I love to transmit to her. Pay attention to this detail, please. It's not about what I want. I, I, I love to transmit to Anna that I am including her in my day. Sometimes it's just a, a text message to say, hey, you know, I'm here. You know, I'm doing this, I'm thinking, I'm so she knows. It's not that, that she will ask or be controlling of me, but right to, to, to share, to share what they are, our experiences, huh? Yeah, you feel included, you know. If if I come home, there's a good part of my day that I don't have to tell her. Why? Because I already told her in two or three words during the day, I'm doing this, you know. I went Keep out for touch. a coffee. Keep in touch. Are you okay? Checking in on one another. This is important. This shows that your, your partner is always within your radar. You know, not, not in the sense of controlling. What are you doing? You know, where are you now? Who are you talking? No, not in that sense. 
but in the radar, in the sense of, you know, I've been thinking about you. Do you need anything? I think this is really important. This is a good way to use technology, right? It was yes. hard to do it back in the days because you couldn't, you know, communicate with the person unless they would call you from a landline or something, but now we can. Just to seek the balance, right? To have this balance between modern time and the... the yeah, using... The past time. Using principles of the past, maintaining the good principles alive, and coupling with the facilities, right, that technology brought us today. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk more about this, but we need to go to a quick break now. We'll be right back. Dear viewer, if you are dealing with difficult problems in your relationship, such as fights or healing from a harsh breakup, jealousy, communication issues, or things of the like, come to the Love Therapy this Thursday and every Thursday at 8 p.m. in Finsbury Park, 232 Seven Sisters Road in 4. 3NX. For more information, visit our website, lovetherapy.co.uk. See you here. See you. Welcome back. To find out more about today's topic, we went to meet some young people to talk about it. Let's check. Okay, so now we are here, Anna, with a group of nice people, yes. nice Hello, young people, everyone. right? Because before, we had the, the feedback from a more mature married couple, right? And we wanted now to get the feedback from the younger crowd. I believe everyone here is single. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Anyone in a relationship? No? Not yet? Okay. But intending one day to be in one. And a happy one, right? Yeah. So what would you be looking for in someone to have a relationship with? So I think you need to have trust. I think you need to have understanding and patience. Those are one of the key skills you need to have in a relationship. What do you guys think, for instance, that, because most of, I see all of you are in your 20s, yeah? The reference that you have from the past are from parents or, or, or uncle, aunt, right? People you know. But what do you see from the past that was good and was lost in the present, or vice versa, something that the present today, concerning relationships, is better than the past? Um, I think one essential thing that we've lost in today's generation is privacy. Um, I think a lot of um, what goes on in a relationship is exposed now. It's put out there on social media, and there's none of that privacy in that um, that intimacy between a couple, it's almost like everyone is involved in the relationship now. And sometimes you see that it brings a lot of complications, it brings a lot of added pressure into that relationship. And then we see that a lot of relationships don't last long now. So that's one thing I see that I think we miss and we lack in today's relationships. Right, so there was more privacy, right? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I've, one thing that I saw with my parents that I really liked, they didn't have the best relationship especially when I was younger, but there was no question of cheating. That never came up. That, that's something, I, I think that's in my culture that is just frowned upon. You, doesn't matter how bad the situation, you never do that for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I will say that is good about nowadays in current culture is, although I think it's a bit too much, is the level of sincerity. I think nowadays we have men that speak more openly, and I think that means that there's a better chance of working things out. There's a better chance of reflecting on yourself. Because at the same time, I look back back in those days and, uh, and you see the examples as well, those who come from, uh, those who are older than us, you see that the guys are very like, and it was one of those situations where the wife just had to put up with it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but at the same time, I think it has to be with balance because the biggest issue I've seen is people are so, soggy and emotional mm -hmm. and, and that's reflected in the music if you listen to love songs nowadays it sounds like a stalker you're like there was that one song a couple of years ago I'm gonna wait for you at the corner of the street where I first met you 
mm -hmm. this too much mm -hmm. and i think that there, there, there has to be that balance and i think society is trying to figure out where we draw the line what we do keep and when we don't and yeah. i think we just need a bit more guidance there yeah so i think people cheat more nowadays because there's no sense of loyalty in a sense where back in the day um, if he was with someone um, to be with them long term is, is, is the mindset whereas now a lot of people I see the mindset is to be of as many people as they can that's what they, they see they they look and they inspire others people that are got loads of girlfriends the ones that have that got the most people rather than you know um, when people think about settling down they think they have to be older they have to be older a certain age you can't they never see examples of young people that are settled down got married and um, so forth so I think people's mindset the young, especially the young young ones is just been distorted yeah it's it's like glamorizing promiscuity isn't it there's like the culture of glamorization of, of everything that is immoral and promiscuous right and that is what is considered to be I don't know hype or, or, or good or, or what do you think you wanted to say something uh -huh. what I wanted to say is the way um, the way the world is as well especially like people go off their feelings so you know that this person, it just feels right, but you know it's not what you want for your future. You know it's not going to last. You know it's not going to go to the end, but you deny like your intelligence and you go off what you're feeling. So you're already going into a relationship knowing that it's not going to work, it's not going to go to the end. And then what happens is when you hit that rock or when you hit that, no, I can't be in this no more, then you just gotta go off. People keep going off their feelings, their feelings, instead of using their intelligence, using their mind, and seeing, can I be with this person for the end of the time? Can I be with this person for for life, for future? So I just have something. Um, just in defence to today's generation, is that they're fed with so much information and so much things to say that you're not complete, to say that there's always something more, there's always something more. So I think. As much as there's this whole element of promiscuity going on in society, I also think it's just a sense of emptiness as well. I think some people, they're in a relationship and things are not so bad, but because they're faced with so much information telling them, no, there's more out there, what you have isn't enough, it, you know, you don't fit into society because you don't have this certain element of a lifestyle. So people end up kind of betraying their partners or looking for something elsewhere where they think that they're going to find that fulfillment when really it's something that they could possibly find in that relationship they just need to sacrifice more or do something different or look at that situation with different eyes. Um, I also think that another reason is the influences around and the role models that people have, the young generation have, because um, if you look at the, the amount of single households and um, people grow up single mums, they don't grow up seeing an example. Even me, myself, I, I grew up with a single mom, so I didn't even think about marriage or long-term relationships. So I think the, how you grow up, the area, the, all these things around you, I think it's just people don't see examples of, of successful relationships. So I think that's why as well. Yeah, it's, it's true because when most of what you see is negative concerning that aspect, it starts to be then considered as something negative, right? Not that it is, right? There's many happy marriages, and I would say in the past, probably even more, even numbers show, right, in the past, even more than today. What's your opinion on this? Why is it that relationship, there were more people, there were marriages would last longer, they would last for the lifetime, and people were happier. Today, they end much faster, and even throughout the period, many couples are unhappy. What's your I was going to say, um, Adding on to what he was saying, mm -hmm. basically today we find that a lot of people, they rush into a relationship, so they don't spend the time to get to know the person properly. So as he was saying, they go on their feelings. So, oh, just because I feel this way, it feels right, so it's just like, okay, I'm just going to go with it. Instead of using their intelligence and thinking, okay, is what I'm feeling, is it going to last forever? Is, this, is it something that's going to last or is this something just temporary? Because if it's something temporary, then it's definitely not going to last at all so going off yeah it's just that basic people need to think more today they need to think okay if I'm getting into a relationship I need to know this person I need to get to know this person I need to spend time to know this person instead of just using my heart and saying oh, okay do you know what because of love at first sight or whatever they say nowadays I'm just going to go off that and base it that that's why okay right um 
the value of marriage has gone down in terms of the importance of marriage. So like now, young people look at it and I used to be one of these people. I used to look at it and be like, oh, well, it's just a piece of paper. Well, why is it so, what's the importance of being married? Why do I need to get married? That's what I feel like in this generation, a lot of young people don't understand the importance of it. They just, the importance of it has gone much more lower. And now, okay. do you want to get married? Yes, 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. Okay, so you change your mind. That's good. It's changing for the better. So, from from what I'm seeing here, Anna, uh, even though we are with a younger group here, younger generation, everyone in their twenties, uh, from what I see, from your point of view, it's like love in the old days was more complete, more thorough, better than what it is today. They appreciate. Do you? Yeah. Is that is that right? 100%. Uh, uh, just show me your hands if you agree with this. If, if if that is what you you also think. I agree to an extent. Right. Because uh -huh. I think that back in the days, it was it was a thing where you were kind of forced, if that makes sense. It's like. Um, for example, if you were a woman in a relationship, mm -hmm. the man was the head and it was kind of like the women didn't have rights and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it was like they couldn't speak up about certain situations that were happening in the house. So I think the only reason why we don't hear as much bad things about before is simply because people didn't speak up as mm -hmm. much. But um, so I would say that a lot was hidden back in the day. So mm -hmm. I can't really say that it's better now or it's better then because mm -hmm. a lot was kept behind closed doors and you wouldn't kind of show it to people in front of people. You would be a happy couple, but at home, women were being abused and all of these things were happening, mm -hmm. so. Right, I understand. So in your opinion, it was not different. It was just that people hid more. So I think there is a difference, but I just think that people did hide a lot more right, back in right. the days. But do you think that with time, relationships, you know, love life relationships have evolved or gone down? I think that with time it has gotten worse, yeah. worse than it gotten was worse. before. Yeah. What do you think, Mark? No, I just agree with her, because um, uh, as, as she was saying in the olden times, like women were seen as an object, as an item. The guys would go out and they would cheat. And the thing is, the woman couldn't speak up. The woman couldn't say anything. The man was the breadwinner. She was the one that stayed at home. This is how things were seen as the olden times. So I think now, like nowadays and olden times, there's good examples and there's bad examples. I think to say if it's got better, if it's got worse, I just think, I think as times got on, things have just become more modernized. Things have been, the wrong things have been more glamorized. But I do think that we can't say that olden times was more because I think I if we I think if we look if we did our research we'll probably see things that happened that were probably ten times worse than what's happening nowadays. So I don't agree with the whole fact of things getting worse at all. Yeah. So I think it all boils down to this: uh, there were positive things about the past. We're talking about the respect. There was more respect. There was more faithfulness. Right. There were more moral principles were more respected. Of course, time also brought positive advance, right? We have better laws now, protecting women, uh, 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 right? There were things that were happening and they put up with the past and today is a crime, right? So, but all in all, I think there has to be a combination of, of what is positive, right? Uh, from the past, and also from the present. There are things also from the present that unfortunately contributed to the disruptment of relationships. I believe you can learn from their mistakes and the good things you can keep and for our lives and make it, it better. Right. But I believe that everyone here believes in love. Yeah? yeah. yeah. And you're looking forward to, to being very happy in that aspect of your life, yeah? yeah. yeah. Guys, I want to thank you very much for coming by, sharing your opinion today, all right? It was very, very important. And this is it, and what you think. You can also send us your opinions, what you think about it. And if you agree, disagree, we are here to also hear you have a say on this show. And you need to know that too. We're going to be right back. Dear viewer of The Love Talk Show, did you know that you can watch full-length episodes now via our YouTube channel. 
All you have to do, Anna, is to find the Love Talk Show YouTube channel, subscribe. You're going to find all our episodes there in full length yes. and you can watch for free. You can even copy the link and share with family and friends. But not only that. You also, in the social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, follow us, like, share and comment. And also don't forget to visit our website, lovetalkshow.tv. There you're going to find even more information that you will not see here on the TV show. And also you can write your questions, send us your questions through the email questions at lovetalkshow.tv. All right, we'd love to hear from you. Let's continue watching Love Talk Show. Now we are back here at the studio, and this is one of my favorite parts of the show. My too. Because it's the part that we get to answer your questions. You can send us questions about any issue in your daily love life. So let's go for the first one. Men and women, we both perceive things in different ways. You know, for myself as a woman, I would, I would love a letter, something I can cherish, I can keep, you know, or even an email, I wouldn't mind, because I guess I'm a bit more modern, because I wasn't alive, I wasn't here back then. You know, um, yeah, I wasn't dating in the olden days. So my question is, do men and women see things in the same way when it comes to communication via text, call, letters? Yeah, that's my question. <laughs> mm. Men and women are very different. You have to show your partner what you would like him or her to do. But remember, people are different. So we have to, uh, to be patient and understand this difference, right? Yes, and uh, I think, Anna, for instance, do men and women see things in the same way in communication? I wouldn't say so. There's, there's similarities, but there are differences. I think for a man, it wouldn't make a, a big difference if he would receive a letter in the mail or an email, and as long as she wrote something to him, he would be happy in the same way. Maybe for a woman, right, that would make more of a difference. But the most important thing is that you communicate, right? And you communicate often. And that you are open in your communication about what you like and what you don't. Yeah. And as the, uh, the relationship develops, then they will start to see, you know, what the other one likes more, what the other one doesn't. This is something that is beautiful. That's why communication is so important because you start to discover one another. They're going to uh, grow together and go uh, uh, to know each other better and what's their preferences. Huh? So that's right. So let's go and have a look to at uh, the second question here. Hi, I've noticed that nowadays a lot of couples and relationships, they're not very open and they don't like to share uh, their social media information. I would like to know how you could go about getting that information if your partner doesn't want to do that. Wow. <laughs> I have a, if I had a red flag, I would raise it right here, right now. Okay, we're gonna... That's a sign, no? <laughs> Yes. Listen. In a marriage, there cannot be privacy. There's no privacy in marriage, Anna. Both have to be open about everything. One law of intelligent love. It's a principle, a rule that we follow. Okay, we learn to follow this, and this has helped us. We keep no secrets. Because they become one once they, they're married. And it's right, and because if, if you think about, oh, but I want my privacy, come on, I can share everything. Okay, the question would be, so why wouldn't you want to share that information? Mm -hmm. I understand some subjects may be touchy or difficult to talk about, right? Delicate, sensitive, but then again, you're not just speaking to a person, you're speaking to the one you're gonna share your life with. So it's important to communicate, it's important. The more you communicate, the less insecurities will be present. And it's important. Why is it that I, I feel that I need to have a Facebook or, or, or whatever profile that you cannot have? Why is it that I feel that I need to take a phone call away from you? Or that I don't give you the, the code to open my phone? That's strange. Yeah. Why the person has maybe to there's hide? No, yeah, maybe there's nothing wrong. Maybe there's nothing wrong. But it leaves gaps, right? It leaves gaps. Why is it? If your partner 
we're not communicating clearly with you. Would you be happy with this? If your partner had to walk away to, to take a phone call, if your partner would say, no, 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 I, I have this, this account here, but I'm not, you know, I'm not sharing what's in there. You know, you're not supposed to know what's going on here on this profile of mine. Why? Yeah. That is the I question. I wouldn't be me. happy. <laughs> right? I, I don't think anyone would. Yes. I think what, what will bring security and, and a sense of trust in the relationship is keep no secrets. We have no secrets. There's nothing about me that she doesn't know. Absolutely nothing. Nothing, Edward. Nothing. And, and these give us security, right? Yeah, and it goes both yes. ways, yeah. right? It has to go both ways. So this idea of not sharing or that you kind of have to pry the information out of a person, please. Another note is important, as we said here, there are subjects that are sensitive. There are people who went through things that traumatized them and it's difficult to talk about it. So of course, don't go there and say, oh, you need to talk about it. Tell me what happened. It's not like this, it doesn't work this way. But there has to be in, in a, sensible and sensitive way, make a partner feel... To communicate and... To yeah, comfortable, right? To communicate even about the most difficult issues. And if there are difficult issues that you, uh, for you to talk about, I would say communicating with your partner will make you feel much, much better. All right, here goes the advice on the second question. We have a third question now. I've heard about these dating apps and it's quite curious because do you really think that they really work? Do you think people can enter into relationship, enter, like really, do you think it's a good ground if I could say? What do you think? Anna, dating apps have become more and more popular. Yes. More and more people are using it's it. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Let's watch a video first before we express here our view on it that talks a little bit about this, about dating apps. Thanks to the use of technology, it is possible to stay in touch with friends and family, get information more easily and even buy whatever you want, just by a click. Technology can also influence your love life. In the rush of our everyday life, we sometimes don't have time to go out and meet new people. In this case, virtual dating apps end up being one of the options for many. Let's find out what people on the street think about this. Uh, regarding dating apps, uh, I understand the people I, who use it because in their minds they think, well, if I, if I use a dating app, if I put my profile in one of those websites or dating app, then I have more chances to find the right person. I have heard about stories where people do meet like an actual partner, but personally, I don't really think you're gonna find your soulmate on a dating app. The only drawback is that you don't know who you're really meeting. Like uh, some weeks ago, I spoke to someone who put a profile there on a website, one of these dating apps or websites. And uh, on the website, it was mentioned there that he was, uh, the, the profile information said he was Christian, uh, a man of conduct, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but when she came to meet the person, uh, it was totally different from the picture. Well, they can get involved to know more people and it's uh, very good. I love dating app. Maybe you're gonna have a better chance if uh, people, uh, they will get together for a new life opportunity, a new meeting. People from all, all around the world. So yeah, dating app is quite good. Yeah, in general, do you think they're good for probably hookups rather than actual relationships? Yeah, certain ones, yeah, they do work, yeah. I think um, it depends what site you're going on to, depends what, like, matchmaker, or well, there's all kind of different ones, but you have to, like, really look into it and see. And I think they should put more um, more details about their, um, their dating sites so that people are aware of it as well, because it's, it's nice to get to know people, and if you're looking for love as well, it's a great way. There are cases of people that meet their greatest love on these apps and even end up getting married. But be careful, you have never met this person before. First, you have to talk extensively through the internet to find out more about this person. Then eventually you decide to meet, pick a public place, 
because sometimes people can create fake profiles or they might not be honest about their intentions. Be careful not to fall in love with a person that you do not know yet. Your expectations must be reasonable and you have to be emotionally ready. Don't fantasize, it can be a great disillusion. There is evidence that dating apps work, but don't try to meet people just on those platforms. Go and have a social life. It's a good thing for you and it's a good way to meet new people. So Anna, the opinion we have on this subject, also commenting on the video we watched, is that even though dating apps, they, they have their, results, their functionality, yeah. Yeah, their results, right? But it shouldn't be the first thing that a person should try in order to find a partner because the risk factor is very big. Once again, this is just our opinion, right? Because you have really no reference about the other person mm -hmm. rather than what is written there. And people can lie. Yeah, can put anything that they would like to put. There. Or not only lie, but they can leave behind certain things about their past or present that are crucial yeah, factors or even dangerous. Right? Part of a person's personality that can be completely, totally removed. I would say it's safer that you get to meet someone who knows at least one person that you know. That you can go to that person and say, hey, how about so-and-so? What do you yes. think? So uh, it's not that you, you're just going to go by what the other person says, but at least some of the feedback that you can get from that person will minimize some of the risks. So this is important, right? As we said, it doesn't eliminate the risk altogether, but when you get to meet someone who already knows someone that you know, you know it's a little bit hard to, <laughs> to take it in, but get to know someone who knows at least one person that you know, and the reference of that person will count, right? And it's so good to so socialize, right? Yes. To meet people and meet friends and family members. So yes. in this opportunity, they can meet the, the someone that they would like to meet. Very good, Anna. I agree with you. So we're coming to the end of today's show, right? And we hope you have enjoyed being yes. here with us today. I believe people learned some good lessons today, I'm didn't sure. they? I'm sure, I'm sure they did. I believe. Yes. We had fun also doing this program and Remember, bottom line is this, regardless of the time that we are living in all the days, you can make relationships work when you apply the principles of intelligent love, right? Yes, yeah, so have that balance, right? Yeah, use good principles of old uh, and apply the technology of today in the positive aspects that it can bring to your relationship, whether single or married this will benefit you, right? Yes. This is sure. it. So we had fun today, we hope you had too. And next week, we are going to be together with another Love Talk show. Have a wonderful day, bye-bye. See you. Many things. things. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Chains. Considerable. Consider considerable. <laughs> uh oh. Do I say you or we? <laughs>